lift every voice and sing to earth and heaven rings ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song. Full of the hope that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song. Full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun. Let us march on till victory is won. What would Jacob Lawrence paint today? What stories would he tell through his art? How would he articulate the Black Lives Matter movement on a canvas? What colors would he use to capture the themes of the riots? the insurrections, the tear gas, George Floyd resistance, George Floyd resistance. How would he say their names? What title would he give for artwork that captures this time, my time, and our time? Today we are at the Seattle Art Museum to see his American struggle exhibit, to talk and learn about systems of power and oppression, racism, and to disrupt white supremacy. And today we're gonna to hear from Beige Felder, and Delbert Richardson, our elder. Jacob Lawrence grew up during the Harlem Renaissance and learned about art and expression from leading Black artists of the era who gave their time to educating young people like him. He went on to create some of the greatest paintings of the 20th century. Today, we'll look at the American struggle, Jacob Lawrence's series focused on early American history. He painted the series in the mid-1950s as the civil rights era grew and set to re-envision American history, including the contributions of Black Americans Indigenous Americans, and women. Panel 2, Massacre in Boston. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Mr. Delbert Richardson. I am the curator, second generation storyteller, and ethnomuseumologist of the national award-winning American History Travel Museum, The Unspoken Truth. You know, what I notice in this artwork is the anger and the rage at the colonists, and probably more importantly, the colors that represent the things that touch me the most is the blood that's coming from not just Crispus Attucks's head, but there's some color red that's in one of the colonists' hands. And what my eyes focus mainly on is the pain and anguish of this first BIPOC gentleman being killed during the American Revolution. What I notice about this work is how everyone else is focused on the unseen enemy, the British, instead of focusing on the person who's dying right in front of them, Crispus Attucks. He was on the first to be killed, and he was also a African-American as well as an indigenous person. And one of the things that Jacob Lawrence spoke about in this panel was the juxtaposition of who's America because Crispus Attucks was not free. He was a fugitive slave. In school, I never learned about him, and we just learned about, we read from a textbook from a white person's point of view, so it was all about the white people. But I think I want to learn more about the heritage I come from and what people did to protect us. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, 
17th of September, 1787. Panel 15 shows the writing of the U.S. Constitution. What I see in panel 15 is a struggle that ensues regarding making decisions on how a nation is to live in peace. What I think, there will never be any peace if everybody's not at the table. And what I feel, I feel that we as a nation must continue to strive to have balance in all the decision making. What I see in panel 15 is white men trying to make decisions for the whole country when really everyone should be making decisions for the whole country because they live in it and it's not fair that only one kind of person gets to say for everyone else. We the people, United States, looking to form a more perfect union. You know, this panel stood out to me for a couple of reasons. I want to believe that Jacob Lawrence was speaking to the challenge. This is, by the way, the preamble to the Constitution. What I believe he was really trying to tell was that here was these white men meeting once again to discuss what's best for the entire nation. However, we the people didn't include me. We were the people that include women. It reminds me of this quote, I think, in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. But they made it real clear they were talking about men. They weren't talking about women or BIPOC people either. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Patrick Henry, 1775. Panel 1 shows a group of colonists gathered in protest, perhaps addressed by Patrick Henry. You know, what I see what's going on in this artwork is a community that's united for one cause. Resistance, resilience, remembrance. What makes me feel that way? That fist in the air, that act of defiance. We're in a revolution. As we embark on what I want to call this racial um, revolution, it's time for us to start finding our voice and speaking truth to power. What I see in panel one is Patrick Henry saying that he's against slavery and no one should be treated like this and everyone else going with him and fighting for what's right. What more I can see in this painting is the blood dripping on the walls and that could symbolize all the slaves had to go through through all the abuse and torture. And I also see that they're wearing like robes and I wonder what the yellow part is on the bottom corner. If you know anything about American history, 1776 is when the Declaration of Independence was signed. This panel speaks to me specifically, and I renamed it, All Lives Matter When Black Lives Matter. That's the contemporization that I wanted to bring to this panel because Lawrence talked about the hypocrisy that was around this convention and hypocrisy around this great vision of America as related to the Constitution. Once again, all lives matter when black lives matter.